Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the Leafs Convo podcast presented by Oak Ridge Ford in London, Ontario, oakridgeford.com. I'm Norman James, along with my podcast, Valentine, the one and only Michael Piagello in Chictawaga, New York. <laughs> Michael, man, it's been a dog's breakfast from the Leafs' perspective lately. A overtime loss slash win versus Arizona, and then the loss to the suffocating stars at Scotiabank Arena 3-2. What say you? Yeah, and nothing has been easy for this team. Victories are, are like pulling teeth. And last night um, against a very good Dallas team that is, you know, sort of changed from three or four years ago when it was Sagan and Ben scoring tons of goals and them not being able to stop anybody to being a shutdown defensive team. So it is possible to, to sort of morph into that. But uh, they got early goals and they – uh, you know, early goals in each period on the first shot mm-hmm. on, in each period. And uh, the Leafs made a late charge but couldn't penetrate that defense and Ben Bishop. So, you know, it's going to be a tough haul for this team. They, you know, they have, they have a number of games left, and it's a situation where they're not going to be able to uh, – it's not going to be an easy path. Yeah, 68 points, third in the Atlantic right now. Boston, 82 points. Tampa may overtake – the Bruins when all is said and done the Leafs have so much work cut out for them uh, as the season progresses towards the trade deadline and then beyond the run to a playoff spot Mike what do we say about this team they outshot the stars uh, the the stat line where it is when it comes to the Maple Leafs and their opponents they're usually outshot shoot the team that uh, they're playing against they're usually out hit the Power play isn't that dominant. How do we categorize this team right now, Mike, other than it's not good enough, but it still leaves a lot to be desired and you're expecting a lot more considering the personnel? Talented but flawed. And I think that's, I think that's the most accurate statement you can make about the team is that you know, they have a ton of offensive talent. They have, you know, they're young. They're, you know, mostly inexperienced with the exception of Tavares and a few other players. And, you know, they, they seem to make it hard on themselves. Mm-hmm. That, that it's, that's the problem. And, you know, they have a really good effective power play. Um, they have, you know, snipers who can score, you know, like we know, you know, Matthews is, is tied for the rocket Richard with, uh, with Pasternak with 41 goals. The issue here is, can they overcome their defensive flaws? And when they score four or five goals, sure. But when they don't score four or five goals, when they play mm-hmm. against a couple tight defensive teams like Arizona and Dallas, it's challenging. And they, you know, in all rights, probably should have lost the game to Arizona uh, on that uh, goal that ended up being reversed uh, because of goalie interference. Mm-hmm. And then Kapanen scores the winner. Um, but, you know, it was a nip and tuck battle against a team that has been struggling the last month. And Dallas is, you know, a team that, has one of the best goals against in the league and a really good goalie in Ben Bishop. And you cannot allow a team uh, that is challenged offensively like Dallas is to score on the first shot three periods in a row. Would you rather be challenged offensively or challenged defensively? Mike, Dallas doesn't score any goals. I mean, their goal differentials uh, plus 10, but they don't Mm -hmm. give up any goals either. The Leafs, 205 goals on the season. That's among the tops with Washington and Tampa right across the NHL, but they've almost given up 200 goals. That's the problem. And mm-hmm. we, we've, we see it, it's optic, I mean, we see it optically, right? I mean, it's virtual right there in front of our face. This team has a glut of offensive talent. Is it too heavily weighted to w- one side of the strategy here, Mike? I mean, you got to put the puck in the net, but you also have to keep it out. Yeah, and I mean, I would rather have a team. It, look at Dallas. They do have players who can play offensively, but they've bought into the defensive system that – you know, um, Montgomery and now Rick Bonus has, you know, uh, implemented. Um, so they can score when they need to, but they choose to play a more chess-like, you know, uh, careful defensive two-way game mm-hmm. than to play offensive wide open. And that that's the thing. It's like in the second half of the year, like it was last year, the Leafs were basically a 500 team because when they, the, the league tightened up, they couldn't play, they couldn't effectively play that game. They couldn't uh, battle against those teams. And, you know, they faced a Bruins team that plays that game extremely efficiently. So eventually they're going to have to get past that. It's like the, like I've, I've made the example a couple of times about the Washington Capitals and how they played wide open offensively until Barry Trotz was uh, until Barry Trotz was basically 
brought in there to make them more of a defensively sound team. And then they were able to win a Stanley Cup. I think Sheldon Keefe and Dubas know that this is the case. It's just a question of how long it's going to take for the Leafs to get the message. I believe it's going to leak into next year and beyond. I'm not saying this year is over by any means, but a playoff berth would be a huge bonus for this team. A first round win would be monumental. And then if you win the first round, anything can happen after that. The way this team has played, the indicators are not pointing at playoff success. Whether they get into the playoffs at all remains to be seen. This is the Leafs Convo podcast for Oak Ridge Ford. I'm Norm, along with Mike. OG's Converts have your say below this post on YouTube and in community. I know you have a lot to say, so have at it. Mike, a couple of games coming up for the Maple Brothers this weekend. Ottawa, Saturday in the capital city. Then it's into Buffalo for a Sunday nighter. The House of Horrors is waiting to haunt the Maple Leafs. I'm predicting that the Leafs will take three or four points over the next two, but we're not going to feel any better about their game. Yeah, I, I, I don't foresee that we're going to feel great about their game for the remainder of the season because I don't see any major changes in the roster. There might be a few um, before February 24th, and if the injuries keep piling up. Last night, Andreas Janssen had a serious knee injury. I, I asked Sheldon Keefe after the game, you know, an update, and he said it's not going to be short-term. If that's the case, and we know the cap situation they're in, then – they may have freed up three, three point two or three point four million dollars, or whatever his cap hit is, uh, in terms of being able to uh, add a defenseman, which I think is going to be necessary because you know I like their, I like some of the things I'm seeing out of Rasmus Sandin and and Lilia Grin, but I think if this team wants to get past the first round, they're probably going to need some help in terms of a veteran yeah. guy. You can't just so, you can't just play the position, Mike. You have to be the position. You have to you have to play bigger than you are. You have to play faster than you are. It's nice to have these guys who are doing things technically correct, but your opponents don't care about that. Like teams like Tampa and Boston, every time they get on the ice, the objective is to win and crush the opponent. Clearly for Tampa, it's about winning the Stanley Cup this year. It's nice to see these kids developing, but the mindset isn't focused on championships. It's just about not making mistakes right now. So I, I just feel this team's just all over. The, it's just all over the place. And I don't, I don't believe yeah. bringing in a defenseman is the, the trigger that is going to shoot this team all the way to a Stanley Cup championship. I feel like it's systemic. It's something that has, there's something going to have to change going forward, not, ju not just for the rest of the season, but beyond. And now we have to bring up the idea of trade talk and, and trade possibilities. And, and I know a lot of people who um, are, are very supportive of, of certain players Hate to hear that, but maybe this team does have too much offensive talent and it's time to spread it out a little more evenly and not just spread it out personnel-wise, but systems-wise. Get back to playing defensive hockey. I don't know if that is Sheldon Keefe's forte, if that's um, his, the way he'd want to run a team, but clearly it works. If you can keep the puck out of your net and score a bunch too, you're going to be successful. Take a look at the teams that do that. Last word to you, Mike. Yeah, his Marley's teams were always successful defensively. And I know, and, you know, based on his comments, he knows where this team needs to improve and play better. It's just a question of, of these players wanting to do it and having the will to do it. And, you know, they're going to need Freddie Anderson to play, I think, better than he did uh, in the game against the Stars. Uh, they, I think they now have a competent backup in Jack Campbell yep. who can spell Anderson. Um, but defensively, I, I think that they're wanting, and we don't know when Morgan Riley will be back. I mean, this team right now, I'll, I'll, the final thing I'll say is this team wants to at least get past the first round. And if they want to get past the first round, they're going to have to improve their defense. And they're going to have to beat Boston, aren't they? Well, it's looking like that right now with Tampa Bay – you know, being the hottest team in the league in Boston could fall behind. It would be Boston, Toronto. And Toronto has to be thankful that since Florida made that comeback against them, Florida, I think, has lost every game except a, a game against New Jersey. So they, they have to be thankful for the Panthers sort of dropping the ball. Michael, you're doing double, triple duty right now. Way to go, my friend. Welcome to my life about 10 years ago. So have fun, <laughs> my friend. We'll talk to you soon.